What's going on everybody and welcome back to TechCubed and today we are going to be taking a look at VMware Workstation Player. Now last video we took a look at VMware Workstation Pro but today we are going to be taking a look at sort of its uh, younger brother type of thing which is Workstation Player which you can have to kind of think of it as a uh, stripped down version of VMware Workstation Pro but it's free to use and it provides a lot of the basic features that you need to get a virtual machine up and running. So we're going to be taking a look at it today and seeing if it's actually worth looking into if you are getting into virtual machines or you want a new piece of software or something like that, maybe an alternative to VirtualBox because a while ago we already took at some of the negatives of VirtualBox and the problems with it. So if you're looking for a new piece of software to use for your virtual machines, this might be worth a look. So this right here is VMware Workstation Player. Well, it's not, this isn't VMware Workstation Player. This is the website for VMware Workstation Player, but this is where I'm gonna be starting. And we'll take a look at VMware Workstation Player itself a little later. So this is uh, basically just a basic program. However, it's basic, but it's, I mean that in a good way, like it's not that hard for beginners to get into. Um, it provides almost everything you need, almost all the features, that you need to get a lot of virtual machines up and running. Um, it's the perfect tool for learning, safe web browsing, um, work from anywhere, powerful local virtualization, and uh, it just it's a great piece of software in my opinion to get started with virtual machines because the, of a lot of the pro problems that it fixes compares to VirtualBox. A lot of the problems with VirtualBox kind of don't really exist on VMware Workstation Player. Um, so here are the system specs that uh, you're going to need. Um, you're going to want something at 64-bit, 2 gigs of RAM minimum, even though I don't really recommend using 2 gigs of RAM. I recommend at least 8. They say 4 gigs of RAM. Um, you might be able to get by using that, but 8 is really the bare minimum you want to have. 2 gigs is just... I can't even imagine trying to use a virtual machine with only 2 gigs of RAM on your host machine. Not even on your virtual machine, on your host machine. Um, so yeah, no, and you can look through here. So all here's all things that you can that's compatible with, and uh, you could even come in here and compare it to Workstation Pro. Like if you're curious, confused, and you want to see whether Workstation Player or Workstation Pro is for you, you can take a look through here. However, um, with this, you get a lot of the features that most people would want in Workstation Player, which is of course free to use. So create new virtual machines, create large virtual machines, convert your PC into a virtual machine mass deployment, all of this stuff that most people would want is in Workstation Player. It's only when you get to more of the higher end features that most people wouldn't really be interested in, that's when it comes more available on Workstation Pro, like encrypted virtual machines, like, like which most people probably wouldn't want. Um, and then of course, secure boot support, most people probably wouldn't want that. Um, Mac OS, uh, not compatible with Workstation Pro, Workstation Player, that is a totally different piece of software that we may look into in the future. Um, however, that Workstation Player and Workstation Pro are not available on Mac OS. That's work, that is VMware Fusion. That's a totally different piece of software, and that's a totally different topic for a totally different video. However, uh, this is not the right piece of software for you if you are uh, looking for something to run on Mac OS. So that's something no. This is mainly on Windows and Linux, not Mac OS. However, if you are looking to run this on Windows or Mac OS, or uh, Linux, not Mac OS, Linux and Windows, then you are completely okay. Um, then, of course, over here, not compatible with Mac OS, of course, and not compatible with any of this. Um, because while well, we aren't working with Mac OS when we are doing Workstation Player Workstation Pro, are we? Um, however, you get a lot of the features that you would want in a virtual machine manager. However, um, it's just the more high-end features that even most people really don't want or wouldn't need by any means. That's the type of things that on um, Workstation Pro, a lot of the more professional things that people will actually need in professional environments for IT and whatnot, that's more for Workstation Pro. Um, but if we come down here, see it's free for personal use. Of course, now there's a commercial license, but we're not be taking a look at that. We're talking about free for personal use. And of course, there's not a trial license for Workstation Player because it's, you guessed it, free. So, um, we can, so that's basically uh, VMware Workstation Player. And now, Let's take a look at VMware Workstation Player itself. So this right here 
is VMware Workstation Player, well, version 16, of course. And if you watch the other video I made about Workstation Pro, you the first thing that might uh, stand out to you is this is way more simple than Workstation Pro. And that's for a reason. This is a much better piece of software to learn with than something like uh, Workstation Pro. This is a very great software to use if you are a beginner. Um, so, of course, right here, your basic features create a new virtual machine, you can open a virtual machine or download a virtual appliance, and of course, if you need it, you can get help as well. Um, so if you go to create a new virtual machine right here, um, a, a thing that is nice about this compared to VirtualBox is you can get an installer disk, um, so if you have any optical drives available, I do not have any optical drives available hooked up to this, it will work with external drives, like I have an external drive over here that I don't have hooked up to this machine, but if I wanted to, then uh, you could hook it up is because it works with external drives. And that's a great thing about this. Well, it doesn't matter if you have an external optical drive or external optical drive, it will work with this. And you can actually use your official um, like Windows disks and things like that. And they will work perfectly fine on here. And if you have an, a disk image, like an ISO image, you can put that in here and then you could go through that way. And you could always do it later, of course. But if you want to go through there and do that, then uh, it will actually go through here and be uh, show you that it's going to be installing Windows 10 and that is a great feature to have um, it's way more simple though like your maximum disk size and then um, you know for Windows you could do 60 gigs um, but you might get better uh, performance if you like upgrade it a little bit from the stock configurations and that kind of goes for a lot of virtual machine managers the stock configurations don't provide the best performance um, however it provides you with a lot of useful features. So um, we're just going to go through here and kind of set up a virtual machine. I'm not going to use this, but we're going to kind of run through the setup here just to look over everything. So store virtual to single file or split it into multiple files. That's really up to you. However, for beginners, I would recommend more uh, splitting it into multiple files, um, mainly because it's just easier to work with. However, this is a great thing about uh, VMware. In my opinion, it's easier to work on than something like um, VMware because VMware is more complex and that's for a reason. It kind of gives you most, if not everything you need to do virtual machine, but unless you really know what you're doing, it's going to be, it's gonna have a kind of a steep learning curve. But with here, it really just lays everything out for you and lets you control it yourself. And another thing as well, it already, it has a default of two processor cores. That's crazy. In VMware, or VirtualBox, not VMware, in VirtualBox, it just gives you one. That's it, just one. You aren't really gonna get that far with only one processor core on newer operating systems. If you know anything about processors or processor cores in modern operating systems, you know one processor core is not going to do well on any sort of modern operating system. So the fact that it's set default to two, so that means you'll get way better performance. And now, admittedly, two isn't a whole lot in the big scheme of things. Like you can get processors with like 32 or 64 cores, you know, with the thread rippers and whatnot, some of the Intel Xeons. However, at least it lets you know that you can upgrade your processor cores on here if you want to, and it already does it by default, so you're not stuck with one processor core. Now, uh, that's just a small thing, honestly. It's a really small thing, but it goes a long way to making this a great piece of software. Um, so coming down here as well, you can set up your drives as well. You can set up all of this and do it the custom, um, even sound cards and things like that. And you can even set it up with uh, virtual printers as well and things like that. Um, yeah, no, and two gigs of memory. Apparently you can give it up to 128 gigs of memory, which I don't know why you'd need that much on a virtual machine. Um, the most you would probably ever need on a virtual machine is maybe at most 32 gigs, unless you're doing, you know, a very, something very, uh, professional. But at that point, you should be using a VMware Workstation Pro. Um, however, two gigs, not a whole lot. I recommend doing it by, uh, at least eight if you're doing something like that. However, not everyone has a whole lot of RAM, so two gigs on like a Windows 10 uh, virtual machine will not, won't be super bad. Um, but yeah, no, so 
on here. Um, again, this is just Windows. So this is because I last time I was on here, I was doing with Windows 10. So it automatically used the Windows 10 ISO. So we're doing this all off of Windows 10, by the way. So a lot of things I said uh, about this are applying to Windows 10, like 60 gig uh, disk and the two gigs of memory. That really applies to Windows 10. Um, other operating systems like Linux isn't going to be a whole lot different, but just keep in mind that this is mainly about uh, Windows 10. So we're not going to power this on because I have absolutely zero intention of using this. However, it's here and uh, you know, it's very easy to go and set this up like anyone could do it, honestly. And that's the great part about this. So uh, it's probably going to take a while to create the disk. Honestly, cancel. Honestly, doesn't matter. Operation was canceled. Yes, thank you. Um, cancel all that. We're not doing that. Anyway, so VMware Workstation Player, if you are like getting into virtual machines or you're looking for an alternative to VirtualBox and you don't want to spend any money, you want to like test out some new software, or it's like you want a good piece of software that's free, you don't have to worry about getting licensed or worry about trial periods and whatnot, and you want to learn about virtual machines or anything like that, I think that this is a great piece of software to look into. That and VirtualBox. VirtualBox is great for other reasons, but it has its problems. And honestly, I feel like if you are new to virtual machines, this may be a better option for you because it'll teach you about virtual machines and it's a great learning tool and it's also very powerful. And uh, you aren't really going to be limited because of the fact that it's a great piece of software to learn with. It's a great piece of software to learn with, but it's also not hindered by pretty much anything. It's Honestly, it does what it does, it does great. And that's why I recommend it to pretty much almost anyone. Um, whether you're new to virtual machines, you just want a new piece of software to look into, this is great, and I recommend it. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any more recommendations for pieces of software, anything like that, any suggestions, um, or any notes or anything, leave it in the comments below. I love reading your guys' comments. However, that will be it for me today. So I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video. Tech Cubed, over and out.